Good evening. This is the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell and tonight we focus on the political acrimony that is taking place over the land acquisition bill. In fact, we'll be talking to a special guest as well about that. All this and more over the next half hour, but first the headlines we're tracking right now. Government decides to re-promulgate the land ordinance. CCPA decides to recommend prorogation of Rajya Sabha. Congress President Sonia Gandhi writes to the Modi government on the land acquisition bill, says rights of farmers non-negotiable for her party. Crisis in the Aam Aadmi Party peaks. Senior leaders Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan allege that they're being forced out of the party. Prime Minister Narendra Modi outlines his government's energy reforms, steps aimed at cutting dependence on energy imports by 10% by the year 2022. And fears of a conflict in Yemen spilling over into a regional war. Saudi-led coalition jets pound Iran back Houthi rebel targets for a second day. The top story this evening, the government today decided to prorogue the Rajya Sabha and re-promulgate the land ordinance that lapses on the 5th of April. The decision comes in the wake of a strident opposition that the government is facing in the House to its land bill. The BGP doesn't have the numbers to pass the bill. Currently, Parliament is on a month-long recess in its budget session. To issue an ordinance when Parliament is in session, uh, at least one House has to be prorogued. Parliamentary Affairs Minister M. Venkaya Naidu indicated that the government will decide the re-promulgation date later. And for more, we are joined by our correspondent Vishal Deya, who has been tracking all these developments. Uh, Vishal, uh, the government had to bite the bullet on this one. Uh, no uh, end to the impasse over the land acquisition bill, isn't it? Vishal, can you hear me? Well, we'll be getting in touch with our correspondent Vishal Deya. The uh, CCPA met a short while ago and decided to, uh, to recommend uh, the pr uh, prorogation of the Rajya Sabha. This to ensure that the land acquisition ordinance can be re-promulgated because it lapses on the 5th of April. Uh, more on that, uh, we're joined by Vishal Deya finally. Uh, Vishal, uh, very quickly, as far as uh, this bill is concerned, uh, the government really having no option and it was forced to bite the bullet by proroguing the Rajya Sabha. All right, we seem to have lost the audio link with Vishal Daya. Uh, moving on now, Congress President Sonia Gandhi today hit out at the India government on the land acquisition bill. She said categorically that her party will never endorse any law that, according to her, will break the backbone of this nation. The Congress President is indicating that she will not yield on the controversial land bill. Calling the government's consensus building exercise a myopic exercise, Sonia Gandhi wrote to Union Minister Nitin Gadkari alleging that the Modi government was bending backwards to favour industrialists. She demanded that the UPA's legislation should be brought back in totality. Sonia's letter says the unabashed display of half-truths and misrepresentations is typical of the government and that fighting for the rights of farmers is non-negotiable for her party. She also decried the government's attempt to paint those opposing its land bill as anti-nationals while asking the government to rise above narrow-minded politics. Whether it comes to the country, we will take all of the people of the country, all of the people of the country. All of the people of the country, all of the people of the country, all of the people of the country, in 2013, as Pradhan Mantri Ji said, there was a law in the law in the law in the law in the law. All of the issues are listening to this law in the law in the law. Where and where, today, the rural development minister is feeling that somewhere and somewhere in this bill, the people are afraid of this. These are two cabinet ministers. That's why, somewhere and somewhere, this is also the government, the government, the Modi Ji, the government, the government, the government, the government, the government, the government. Sonia's letter was in response to Gadkari's own letter last week to Sonia Gandhi and leaders of other opposition parties inviting them to an open debate on the land bill. Gadkari insisted that the bill was very much in the farmers' interests. She said it was regrettable that anyone championing the cause of distressed farmers and needy farm labourers was being branded as anti-national by a myopic Modi government bending backwards 
to favor select industrialists. The letter also says that the fundamental difference between the Congress and the BJP is in understanding farmers' distress and loss of livelihood by acquisition of land without safeguards. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Parsa Venkateshwar Rao Jr., editorial consultant with the DNA, now joins us to help us understand. Uh, Parsa, I mean, uh, the government, as I was asking our correspondent also earlier, had to bite the bullet by proroguing the Rajya Sabha and uh, the land acquisition bill is something uh, that uh, seemingly the political standoff uh, is set to continue for some time. Uh, I think it's basically, uh, it's become a, a political battle uh, between uh, the BJP on the one hand and the Congress and other uh, left parties on the other. So what I feel is that they are not really looking into uh, the merits or demerits of the land acquisition bill or the amendments. Uh, if there were to be an open uh, debate and each side would were to put uh, uh, across their points of view as to why they hold on to their uh, particles, uh, particular stand, uh, it would be an informed debate. But I do not think uh, uh, they are willing to do that. Mm. This has become some sort of a political um, fisticuffs mm. uh, with the BJP trying to project itself as one which is um, uh, trying to uh, push for economic growth and the need to do, uh, do, do, do so by uh, amending this law and uh, the Congress and the other opposition parties uh, trying to say that uh, they are uh, farmer friendly and that they want to resist this kind of a thing. But I think there is there are some real issues in the land acquisition bill uh, which need to be discussed and all the uh, aspects were not uh, included in the uh, 2013 bill. Mm -hmm. So that leaves it open and I do not know why uh, they are not willing to discuss because once you come to a discussion on the technicalities, it will be realized that uh, there is not much of a difference and each one can accommodate the other. But I think the BJP wants to score a political brownie point and the Congress and the other parties want to do the same. All right, so that leaves a uh, typical standoff uh, sort of situation. But uh, if, if you look at uh, what the government is now planning to do, re-promulgate the ordinance, there were amendments that were proposed. There were, in fact, uh, allies who, of the government who were opposed to the bill but said uh, an amendment, amended bill can be talked about. So do you expect major changes in the bill and uh, perhaps uh, that uh, could uh, be a way out of this uh, kind of a standoff? I think to start with, the government was, um, uh, was in haste and uh, unthinking when it brought uh, the ordinance. Uh, they should have known that this is a major uh, issue and that it needs to be discussed and you can't push it uh, through uh, in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So once having got the ordinance, they introduced the bill knowing full well that they don't have the numbers in Rajya Sabha. Now proroguing the parliament uh, during the midway through the budget session mm -hmm and uh, wanting to re-promulgate the ordinance does not really solve the problem. It mm. buys time for the government mm. because at the end of another six months, the government has to find a strategy, come back to the parliament to get the bill passed mm. because the ordinance is not a permanent solution. Right, and in fact, uh, that is what uh, major businesses that the government is trying to get in and create that environment for investment in infrastructure. Uh, till the time this bill uh, ordinance does not become a bill, that uh, kind of uh, uh, that investment is certainly not going to come in. And uh, if you talk about the farmer side as well, Parsa, I mean, uh, the BJP's allies and uh, the BJP's own, in fact, uh, the, the many voices within uh, the parent organization, the Sung, that uh, are uh, a little bit worried about the anti-farmer stance. Uh, do, do you see? made the BJP uh, adopting a perhaps a different strategy uh, to combat the situation? You know, I think what is happening is the BJP is not uh, able to put across its uh, point of view. We may not agree with that point of view, but they do have a, a certain approach to the economy. Mm. They feel that industrial uh, progress is essential for economic growth and that it is essential for to end uh, uh, so to sort of eliminate poverty mm -hmm. and because the majority of the poor people are the rural areas they want to shift them away from agriculture now that is their approach and they should explain that approach instead of saying that we are giving uh, more money to the farmers and all that mm -hmm. the second thing they have done is they have done away with uh, the uh, social impact uh, assessment uh, thing and they have also taken away the consent clause mm -hmm. Now they have to explain that look in certain areas it will be difficult to arrive at consent and 
so the government will or, uh, consult with the farmers but will not wait for that kind of a 80 percent 70 percent concern because then the projects will be delayed mm -hmm. for that they'll have to reach out to the farming uh, lobbies farming communities and to the other parties and be honest in explaining uh, uh, the difficulties as to why they have to do it instead i think they are riding a high horse thinking that they have a better approach uh, to economic growth mm -hmm. and that the congress bill uh, the upa land acquisition bill of 2013 is inadequate mm -hmm. They must explain the inadequacies in, uh, inadequacies in a more um, conciliatory tone, mm -hmm. which they have not adopted so far. All right, and that confrontational approach has certainly created uh, this kind of a standoff. Parsa Venkateshwar Rao Jr., thank you very much for coming in and helping us understand this issue a little better. Well, time for a very quick break right now, but coming up on the other side, former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee has been conferred with the Bharat Ratna. This happened today, more on that on the other side. In the Maths Factor, we travel through time and space and see how Maths has evolved and how it is a part of the world around us. Join us on Rajya Sabha Television. Watch the Maths Factor every Sunday at 8 a.m. Welcome back, you're watching the news tonight. Now, former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee was conferred the Bharat Ratna today. President Pranam Mukherjee president the, presented the country's highest civilian award to Vajpayee at, uh, at Vajpayee's residence in Delhi. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari and Prime Minister Narendra Modi led a host of VIP, VVIPs, including many senior BJP leaders, to witness the occasion. The award for Vajpayee was announced on December 24th, a day before he turned 90. Vajpayee was the Prime Minister thrice. He was also the first non-Congress leader to serve a full five-year term from 1999 to 2004. He has been seriously ill for the last few years. Atal Ji's life has been served by the government. He has lived for the life of the country. और हिंदुस्तान में मेरे जैसे करोड़ों ऐसे कार्यकर्ता हैं जिनके जीवन में वाजपेयी जी एक प्रेरणा है आने वाली पीढ़ियों को भी उनकी प्रेरणा मिलती रहेगी मैं इस भारत रत्न सम्मान पाने वाले वाजपेयी जी के जीवन हमें सदा सर्वदा प्रेरणा देता रहे मार्गदर्शन देता रहे यही प्रभु से प्रार्थना करता रहूंगा जो जन सेवाएं वाजपेयी जी ने इस देश को दी है एक राजनीतिक नेता एक विचारक एक कवि एक प्रधानमंत्री के रूप में और इस देश को मजबूत करने में जो भूमिका निभाई है उस सब कारणों की वजह से आज वाजपेयी जी ने तो सम्मानित मान्य राष्ट्रपति जी ने किया है The crisis in the Aam Aadmi Party seems to have reached a point of no return. Dissident leaders Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan launched a frontal attack on party chief Arvind Kejriwal, accusing him of stifling internal democracy and adopting unfair means to capture power. The war of words got shriller with a sting operation with allegedly Arvind Kejriwal's voice saying rather unceremonious things about the duo. All eyes are now on the party's National Council meeting on Saturday. आप कहीं ना कहीं अरविंद केजरीवाल को राष्ट्रीय प्रवक्ता राष्ट्रीय कन्वीनर के पद से हटाने के इसका षडयंत्र कर रहे हैं या उसमें शामिल है। The talks of reconciliation between the warring factions of the Aam Aadmi Party seem to have failed. The war of words between the Arvind Kejriwal camp and the dissident camp escalated on Friday, with the rebels Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan mounting a no holds barred attack, accusing Kejriwal of running the party like a dictator. हमने कहा था सत्रह तारीख को नोट देके कि अगर ये पांचों चीजों में न्यूनतम जो हमने डिफाइन किया है वो पार्टी स्वीकार कर लेती है तो ये नहीं हम हर पद छोड़ने को तैयार हैं। Both addressed the press on Friday where they claimed they were being forced out for demanding more transparency and internal democracy. उन्होंने बोला पार्टी चीजें तो ठीक हैं लेकिन पार्टी के शीर्ष नेतृत्व ऊपर अगर कोई सवाल उठता है किसी भी मुद्दे से वो मुद्दा तो आपको बिल्कुल मेंशन भी नहीं करना चाहिए और बार-बार यही बोला गया 
कि आप लोग इस्तीफा दे दीजिए बाकी जितने हम लोग देख लें अब ये हम लोगों को इस्तीफा दिलवाने की पेशकश बार बार इतनी जोर से क्यों करी जा रही है किसके कहने पर करी जा रही है The Aam Aadmi Party leaders in response accused the two founding members of lobbying with rival groups in anti-party activities. उन्होंने ये तो बताया कि हम कांग्रेस के साथ दिल्ली में सरकार बनाने की कोशिश कर रहे थे और इसको जब एल जी को चिट्ठी लिखी तब भी हम लोगों ने माना था उसके बाद अभी जब ये स्टिंग वाली बात आई थी उस समय भी पूछा गया उस समय भी माना था पूरी राष्ट्रीय कार्यकारिणी ने और इसके लिए वोटिंग हुई थी ये बात उन्होंने नहीं बताया देश के कार्यकर्ताओं को गलत संदेश और देश की जनता को गलत जानकारी नहीं देनी चाहिए ये मेरा निवेदन है उनसे ऑल द मॉड स्लिंगिंग बिटवीन द टू फैक्शन केम जस्ट डे अहेड ऑफ द पार्टी क्रूशल नेशनल काउंसिल मीट विद पार्टी सोर्सेज क्लेमिंग दैट द रिमूवल ऑफ द टू डिजेंट लीडर्स फ्रॉम द पार्टी इज इमिनेंट ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी The Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday appealed to well-off people to give up uh, on subsidized cooking gas. Addressing an energy summit called the Urja Sangam in Delhi, Modi also expressed his government's uh, efforts in uh, reducing dependence on energy imports by 10% by the year 2022. Pitching for an energy sufficient nation, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed to people to work towards cutting its dependence on energy imports. Aaj hum ऊर्जा के क्षेत्र में करीब करीब 77 परसेंट इंपोर्ट करते हैं ऑयल और गैस और पेट्रोलियम सेक्टर में क्या आजादी के 2022 के पर्व पर अमृत पर्व पर हम ये 57 77 में से कम से कम मैं ज्यादा नहीं कह रहा हूं 10 परसेंट इंपोर्ट कम करेंगे Modi outlined his government's energy reforms in the past 10 months. He said they helped 2.8 lakh consumers surrender the LPG subsidy and effect a savings of over 100 crore. Modi also said the Petroleum Ministry will implement the world's largest cash transfer scheme in LPG in the next 100 days, mainly by implementing the Janthan scheme to transfer subsidy directly to consumers. He also outlined the government's plan to increase coverage of pipe natural gas from the current 2.7 million households to 10 million over the next 4 years. Modi said his government is committed to expanding India's gas grid network to cover untouched areas in the eastern parts of the country. Hamari in companies ko target karna chahiye jald se jald wo multinational bane. Kyunki urja ka pura ek global market bana hua hai. Kai aise vishay hain ki jisko agar hum bal denge to main samajhta hu ki hum in cheezon ko paar kar sakte hain aur ye baat nishchit hai. कि ऊर्जावान भारत ही विश्व को नई ऊर्जा दे सकता है इंडिया स्पेंड अराउंड नियरली 1.89 लाख करोड़ ऑन क्रूड ऑयल इंपोर्ट इन 2013-14, मेकिंग इट अ मेजर कंट्रीब्यूटर टू द कंट्रीज इंपोर्ट बिल ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी फॉर सम ऑन नेशनल न्यूज नाउ हियर्स नेशन वाइड The Gujarat High Court on Friday rejected the temporary bail plea of Asaram Babu who had sought permission to attend the last rites of his nephew Asaram Babu is in accused in a rape case and had sought release for 30 days the court uh, said Asaram's reason is not good enough to grant him bail Three more farmers died of heart attacks in Rajasthan after unseasonal rain destroyed their crops at least 18 farmers have died so far after the crops were devastated Bollywood actor Salman Khan gave his version to a Mumbai court in the 2002 hit and run case. Khan said he wasn't driving the car at the time nor was uh, he there during the accident. His SUV ran over people sleeping on the pavement. One person was killed and four others were injured. Some international news now. A coalition of Middle East forces continues to launch airstrikes against Shia Houthi rebels in Yemen. While Saudi Arabia was using 100 warplanes in the operation, its allies will contribute dozens more. The US has said it was providing logistical and intelligence support. Saudi Arabia insists its campaign is against Houthis, but there are concerns that this coalition is provoking a wider war. 
On day two of the Saudi-led airstrikes in Yemen, at least 15 locations were pounded. They included rebel positions in capital Sana'a and an air base near the port city of Aden. Ten people died in the northwestern Sada province, the home of Abdul Mal al Houthi, the supreme leader of Houthi Shiite insurgents. Houthi rebels also responded with intensified anti-aircraft artillery. الأمر فالقوات البرية السعودية جاهزة وقوات الدول الصديقة والقوى الشقيقة جاهزة وسوف يرد أي عدوان من أي نوع. One of my biggest concerns about leading from behind is coming true. That the vacuum created by America's failure to lead in the Middle East is setting in motion a calamity that could result in a bloodletting between Sunnis and Shias that we haven't seen in a thousand years. Meanwhile, Yemen's president, Abdurabu Mansur Hadi, resurfaced in Saudi Arabia's capital Riyadh after fleeing rebel forces in Eden. He was under house arrest in Sana'a after Houthis took control of the capital. Now, as airstrikes continue, he will go to Egypt for an Arab League summit on Saturday as the legitimate Yemeni president. Saudi Arabia says it is defending the legitimate government of President Hadi. Again, we understand the Saudis' concerns. The, the, we understand the, cons the, 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 the threat that they perceive uh, on their border uh, to which they're responding. Um, so, you know, and we're, we're supportive of their efforts uh, to address that. Our, our, our uh, ultimate goal remains uh, a political negotiation process. Meanwhile, Shia power Iran, which Sunni ruled Saudi Arabia accuses of backing the rebels, also demanded an immediate halt to the strikes. But Turkey accused Iran of trying to dominate the region. Bir Şii Sunni çatışmasına bu dönüşmüştür ve biz bu mezhepsel çatışmaların hiçbirine olumlu bakmıyoruz. Bunların karşısındayız. Düşünün ki Yemen kendi içinde maalesef bir bölünmeye doğru gidiyor. The Houthis say their aim is to replace Hadi's government, which they allege is corrupt. Hundreds of them staged a rally in Sana'a after the Thursday airstrikes that killed 18 people. The conflict that pulls in regional powers could disrupt global oil supplies. Already, the price of Brent crude rose almost 6% after the strikes began. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. Investigators are looking for answers as to why co-pilot Andreas Lubitz apparently slammed the Germans' wing flight 9525 into a mountainside in the French Alps. Teams are still looking for the second black box. Searches meanwhile suggest that Lubitz may have been mentally unfit to fly. Investigators found rip leave notes issued by a doctor for Lubitz, including the day of the crash, that indicate Lubitz was under treatment for some time. Emergency teams are continuing their search and recovery after the German wings flight crashed into an alpine mountain killing all 150 people on board. The second black box is still missing. It is expected to shed more light on the plane's final minutes. Meanwhile, European Airlines has framed new airline rules that require at least two crew members to be present in the cockpit all the time. Ich halte die Idee des Vier-Augen-Prinzips für eine grundsätzlich richtige. Damit kann man dafür sorgen, dass es eine Situation des Aussperrens nicht mehr so einfach gibt aus dem Cockpit. Ich bin tranquila, ich glaube, dass ich jetzt die Kompanie mehr sicher bin, um zu fliegen. Aber ich glaube, dass es eine Medizin sein sollte. De alguna forma, o un tercer piloto, o, o que se pudiera abrir de alguna forma especial, tanto por si hay algún, algún acto terrorista fuera de, de cabina como si lo está dentro. Meanwhile, the focus has moved from the mechanics to the man flying the plane. German investigators searched two homes linked to Andreas Lubitz, the German wing's co pilot who is accused of intentionally setting the plane on a fatal descent. Lubitz's family home in Montebor and his apartment in Dusseldorf were searched, after which it has emerged that Lubitz hid the details of an existing illness from his employers. Officials have found torn up sick notes in his home, including one covering the day of the crash. However, the nature of Lubitz's illness has not been revealed. Allerdings wurden Dokumente medizinischen Inhalts sichergestellt, die auf eine bestehende Erkrankung und entsprechende ärztliche Behandlung hinwiesen. 
der Umstand, dass dabei unter anderem zerrissene, aktuelle und auch am Tattag, den Tattag umfassende On Thursday, the French prosecutor leading the investigation into the crash said that co-pilot Lubitz locked the plane's pilot out of the cockpit and deliberately set the plane on a lethal descent. The crash claimed 150 victims from more than a dozen countries, including Germany, Spain and the United States. Relatives and friends of the victims travelled on flights to an area near the site where their loved ones perished. They held prayers overlooking the mountain. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, some more international news and updates in Global Buzz. China today pledged to deepen anti-terrorism, maritime security and military technology cooperation with Pakistan. The move is expected to strengthen their strategic ties. The Vice Chairman of China's Central Com Military Commission, General Fan Changlong, met uh, Pakistani Navy Chief Mohammad Zakaullah in Beijing in this regard. Chile was hit by its worst flood in 80 years. At least seven people were killed and many more are missing. The widespread destruction and flooding were reported in the country's north. Military helicopters ferried supplies and evacuated people from some villages. Authorities in Sierra Leone enforced a three-day lockdown to curb the spread of Ebola. The entire population was ordered to stay at home during the lockdown. Volunteers are going door-to-door -door looking for people with signs of the disease. Dozens of new cases are still being reported every week. At least 10 pilgrims were killed and several injured in a stampede in Bangladesh. The dead included seven women. The incident took place uh, during a holy bath in the old Brahmaputra River outside Dhaka. People were trying to rush to the river from two adjacent ghats. Survivors complained that there weren't enough volunteers and police to control devotees. Motorcycle bomb killed two policemen and injured 13 others in Pakistan's Karachi city. Around 50 police personnel were in the vehicle at the time of the blast. Rescue and emergency teams rushed to the site while victims were moved to the Jinnah Postgraduate Medical Center for treatment. Tehreek at Taliban Pakistan claimed responsibility for the attack. Now all the action from the world of sports in Sportsbeat. Led by swashbuckling captain Brendan McCullum, New Zealand is banking on their hyper-aggressive brand of cricket to win the Cricket World Cup final. However, four-time champions Australia will be entering as match favourites after they thrashed India in Thursday's semi-final. The finals will be played at Melbourne on Sunday. South Korea's Olympic swimming champion Park Tae-won uh, today apologised for a failed doping test that led to an 18-month ban. Swimming's uh, governing body, FINA, handed out the ban on Monday at a hearing in Switzerland. The 25-year-old tested positive ahead of the Asian Games in September. A Spanish daily reports that Barcelona legend Xavi will sign uh, with Qatari outfit Al Saad at the end of the current La Liga season. This will end his 24-year association with Barcelona that he joined as an 11-year-old. The 2010 World Player of the Year will head to Qatar on a three-year deal. He will be paid $11 million a year. Argentinian Juan, Patro, uh, Juan Martin Del Potro fell to Canada's uh, Vasek Pospisil in 6-4-7-6 in the second round of the Miami Open. Del Potro was uh, playing his first match since having surgery on his wrist in March. Del Potro in, uh, played in just four matches in 2014 before undergoing the surgery and is currently ranked number 616. Defending MotoGP World Champion Marc Marquez put up a dominant performance to top time sheets in the first practice of the new season in Qatar. Marc Marquez, who cruised to the world title in his maiden session in MotoGP in 2014, ended the session in first with a time of 1 minute 55 seconds at the Losel International Circuit in Doha. That's the news tonight. Good night.